The significance of Ephesians is its main purpose is, you know, for, for spiritual encouragement, for instruction, for guidance. And the, Paul's writing this while he's in prison, and he's kind of writing to like the early Christian church, which is in Ephesus. And just from the title of Costly Redemption and Lavish Forgiveness, I was thinking about like, you know, before reading Ephesus, I was like, what are other uh, Bible stories that are related to redemption and forgiveness? So some some stories that came in mind were the, pro the story of the prodigal son. And for if you guys don't know, just a little summary. So a son takes his inheritance early and he leaves to do a bunch of worldly stuff in the world. And then he hits rock bottom and he comes back home and he's greeted by his father. But he wasn't expecting that. He's expecting to be punished, but his father, you know, gives him all this forgiveness and he takes him back in as if he's his son again. And he's lav and he's welcomed with lavish forgiveness. The second story is like the conversion of Paul. You know, before he was Paul, he started off as Saul. He was the persecutor of Christians. And then he became Paul, one of the most powerful apostles. And despite his past actions, you know, the costly redemption, he was forgiven and he was redirected by Jesus lavish forgiveness. The story kind of shows us like the depth of Jesus' forgiveness. You know, he can redeem even the most hardened hearts. Just a third story. The woman caught in adultery. So this woman is caught in adultery and the Pharisees find her, catch her, and bring her, bring her out to Jesus, you know, as a way to trap Jesus. Like, what are we, what is, I wonder what Jesus is going to do. You know, what is Jesus going to do with this woman caught, caught in adultery? And what Jesus does actually shocks everyone. You know, he doesn't condemn her. He forgives her. And he even offers her a fresh start, you know, go and sin no more. Right. Fourth story, the most important story, the sacrifice of Jesus. I think this is the ultimate costly redemption. Why? Because it is a life for lives. And it happened because of love. His costly redemption of dying on the cross for our sins is the ultimate form of a lavish forgiveness for all of humanity, for everyone that's ever lived. And in this lesson, uh, one of the questions is the theme of redemption. We see a lot in uh, Ephesians seven, one, or chapter 1, 7 and 8. And then it asks us to compare, okay, what does Colossians 1, chapter 1, verses 3 to 13 have in common with that? What about Titus 2, 13 to 14, and Hebrews 9, verse 15? And I did all the comp comparing for you guys, but some themes that are brought up over and over again in all these verses is that there is redemption through Christ. Redemption through Christ, why? Because Jesus is our redeemer, and another theme that is touched on a lot is the theme that redemption's effects changes the lives of the believers. Amen. There's this costly redemption, there's this lavish forgiveness, but what does that have to do with us? You know, that person can you know forgive us as much as they want, that person can you know go through whatever they want, but what about us? This is how redemption changes our lives. So to, so I broke it down into two of the, or the two themes that are in Monday's lesson, costly redemption and lavish forgiveness. So costly redemption, and it's, it's, it's tied really well to Ephesians chapter one. Why? Because the, the summary of Ephesians chapter one is that redemption is, to, is through Jesus' blood and the forgiveness of and the forgiveness of sins, we see it directly in, in verse seven and eight of Ephesians one, where redemption is through Jesus' blood. I want to touch on that redemption through Jesus' blood. Notice how it only says redemption through Jesus' blood and nothing else. Nothing else is explicitly stated, at least. But what about Jesus' power? What about Jesus' love? Can we get forgiveness? Can the redemption? Can what Jesus did with dying on the cross? Can his love and power help us, or is it just his blood? Well, I want to, I want to challenge that as a question. Can Jesus' love save you? Can Jesus' power save you? Can Jesus' blood save you? Well, in my thoughts, God can love you as much as you want. God does love you tremendously. God has all this power in the world, but what is it if you don't accept his blood? So it's through Jesus' blood that we are saved. Amen. I think 
think it's all combined it. Yeah, of course. Because when we talk about Jesus, Jesus is love, right? Yeah. When you accept the blood of Jesus, you accepted the love because you can see that. I mean, and also it's by his power, right? Because without his power, we cannot be saved too. I think the three things that you said, it's combined it. You know, of course, it has to be blood in order in order to be redeemed, yeah. right? Because without a blood, none of us will, we will be redeemed. Yes. But I think all of them, you know, all the three things, because all of that is Jesus Christ. We cannot uh, set apart all those characteristics. That's my thought. Yeah, of course. And additionally, in verse five, uh, the at least in my version, it talks about how God adopted our us as His sons, and that's like. You know what Pastor Asher was talking about in this in the Sunday portion when he was summarizing everything is that God chose us before we did anything. We just have to choose Him back, you know. Yeah. And then just really quick on the lavish forgiveness part, it's kind of like what what uh, Ephesians chapter two is kind of all about. And we've heard this phrase by grace through faith, and that's what Ephesians two is kind of hitting on. It emphasizes the free gift that is poured out to those that believe in God. Jesus. So yeah, that is today's lesson. Amen. Amen. Amen.